Hello, everybody. I wanted to give you my quick and dirty rundown thoughts of Risk of Rain Returns, as I've been receiving a lot of questions, naturally, about the game. So this is not a full review. I will be making a full review of this game. I'm still playing the game, experiencing it, finding all the unlocks, etc. But I wanted to give you, again, just a quick and dirty thought. So I'll jump to the conclusion. Let's start with that. Risk of Rain Returns is essentially Risk of Rain 1 with like a couple DLCs worth of content on top of it. What do I mean by that? Well, uh, essentially, the game was advertised to us as a modernization of Risk of Rain 1. While I think they have succeeded in some aspects, they've dropped the ball on some other pretty major aspects, which we'll cover. So it ends up just feeling like the first game just with some extra content tacked on top. That being said, I do think it's worth the money. I think $15 is a, an entirely fair price for the game. It's on sale currently right now for like 12 and a half, but the base price is base price is $15. And I do think that's worth the money. Now, in terms of who I recommend the game for, number one, Risk of Rain 1 players. If you enjoy Risk of Rain 1, you're going to enjoy Risk of Rain Returns. Number two, Risk of Rain 2 players that also enjoy platformers, 2D side-scrolling platformers. You're going to love Risk of Rain Returns as well. And then finally, Risk of Rain 2 players that don't really mind platformers. Maybe they're not your cup of tea exactly, but you don't mind them. You enjoy the occasional one. You're going to love Risk of Rain Returns as well. And then if, obviously, if you just enjoy platformers straight up, you're going to play this game as well. Now, I don't recommend Risk of Rain Returns for people that don't enjoy Risk of Rain 1, as what I just said, it's basically the first game with some DLC on top. So if you don't like the first game, you're not going to like Risk of Rain Returns either, obviously. And second of all, if you don't like platformers, again, this is a platformer through and through. The movement is heavily, and not even just the movement, the gameplay flow is a platformer. Like You are constantly moving and jumping and climbing up and down things and the vertical scale of each stage is gargantuan, which is something we're going to cover in just a second. So those are the people that I recommend or do not recommend the game for. The first pro I want to talk about are obviously the graphics and the animations, all of that stuff. Beautiful, excellent job. I don't think anyone is complaining about the look of the game. It keeps the exact same tone and atmosphere of the first one, just has, you know, higher fidelity uh, sprites and whatnot. It, graphics and animations, good job. Second of all, the unlocks. Unlock system is awesome. Uh, just the regular way you unlock stuff from playing the game and killing X monster, acquiring this specific set of items. That's all there. But then you have the Providence Trials on top, which is essentially the um, prismatic trial game mode from Risk of Rain 2, where it's a predetermined challenge that you have to go through. Just the Providence Trials are handcrafted. And there are, I don't even know how many there are. I've done, I think, 20 or something like that. And I'm not anywhere close to doing all of them. There are a lot of these Providence trials that are very fun. Some of them are very fun. Some of them are kind of annoying, but overall they're a very good way. And my point, you unlock stuff through the Providence trials. So you, you do a challenge with a new ability on a survivor and then you unlock that ability on that survivor. Very cool idea. The last pro I want to talk about music. Chris Christodoulou. I mean, is, does he ever miss guys? Come on. Is he missing? No, not at all. The music, absolutely excellent. Uh, definitely keeps the essence, the soul of the original while adding in, obviously, what he's grown with Risk of Rain 2 and his other music as well. Very good with the music. Okay, the cons, which is what I'm assuming a lot of you are here for to hear my opinion on. I think one of the biggest things and why I get frustrated more often than not, just the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, is just because how freaking big the stages are. They are huge. And I know that they're huge in Risk of Rain 1 as well. I don't think that should have been carried over one-to-one. -one. It basically is like a one-to-one. -one. I didn't play too much of Risk of Rain 1, so someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm almost certain the stages are very, very, very close to what they were, if not the exact same in Risk of Rain 1 in terms of where the platforms are, where the ropes are, et cetera, et cetera. Now, that'd be slightly different, but the point still stands. They are huge, and it just takes so long to get anywhere on the stage. It doesn't feel good. There's also too much reliance on the ropes. I feel like uh, obviously you have geysers and ropes, but I feel like there's just way too much reliance on having to pinpoint accurately, jump on the rope, then you spam the space bar so your character climbs a little faster on the rope. Like that's fun occasionally, but every single stage is a rope, 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 rope. I feel like there could have been something different going on here. Uh, just I don't know exactly. Uh, what could have been different here? I'll, I'll try and offer a solution for each one of my cons here because I don't want to just nitpick the game or seem like I'm nitpicking. I want to offer actual constructive criticism, but I think the stages are too big, too reliant on the ropes. And also, I think there's a la uh, distinct lack of environmental cues, basically. Like, think about in Risk of Rain 2, even your your, your least favorite map, where wherever you spawn in on that map, you pretty much know where you are, right? 
Risk of Rain 1, or sorry, well, and Risk of Rain Returns. Again, the maps are pretty much identical. Risk of Rain Returns, yeah, you spawn in and you roughly know where you are, but just because of the nature of a 2D game versus a 3D game, you have so much less information to work with that I feel like the environmental cues of, oh, I'm on this specific section of the map, oh, I'm in this section now, or whatever, I think they could be a little better. And this also goes for like the secrets. If you see the logbooks are like floating in between the ground, you see like, oh, is a logbook? How do I get to there? I feel like the, the ways to get to them, they're pretty obvious, but sometimes they just feel a little cheap. Like um, there was a clip today on my stream. I'll try and pull it up if I can find it where the wall, it was just like a hole in the wall, a secret hole. And the exact same indicator for the actual entrance into the secret passage was right below it as well. But this one was like in the middle of the wall. So you could tell that you had to like jump off the cliff and like hold your key and slide your character in. Whereas the other one was like on the ground basically. So I guess I should have known that, oh, it's on the middle of the wall versus the bottom, but it, it was the exact same thing. And I feel like that's kind of it's kind of cheap. I feel like you could do a better job. So the traversal of the stages doesn't feel good. They're way too big. My potential solution would be to just slightly increase the character jump height. Like, I really don't think that's a big deal. You pretty much have to be within, I don't know, four pixels of the rope. I don't take the math seriously here, but you have to be very, very close to the rope, which again, you're climbing a lot of ropes to actually jump and latch onto it because it's most of them are pretty high up. Like they're not they're not anywhere close to your character height. You definitely have to jump to get uh, to like 90% of the ropes. So I think a slightly higher jump height would not break the game whatsoever and it would help alleviate that a lot. Also, I think a faster base movement speed on the character would help. I Obviously, I understand that you can zoom the, the screen out. I started playing on 1x zoom today. You can go from like 2.8 is the most zoomed in all the way to just regular zoom, which is absolutely massive. It definitely helps because you can see a lot more information However, it then removes the attachment you have to your character, right? The animations when you're in combat, like you want to see all of that stuff. So making making my character this this big on my screen kind of removes that aspect. And I don't think that's a solution. It's just a band-aid, right? It's a it's not an actual fix. It's just a band-aid solution. So slightly higher jump height and faster base movement speed on the characters. Obviously, another solution would be just shrink the stages. But I think that's way harder than just, you know, increasing your speed and your jump height. Second of all, loot density now this is partly because of how big the stages are but i do think that just in general traversing the stages and trying to get loot just doesn't really feel good um there's not a lot of loot i don't know if i'm crazy over here i'm uh, people in my chat were telling me they feel the same way but i want to know the the dissenting opinion as well is that the right way to say it i don't know it just feels like there's not enough loot um maybe it's because there's too much equipment <laughs> i really do think that equipment is showing up way too often and it doesn't feel good because it's not a permanent buff to your character right you have to choose which equipment you're using you only have one at a, at a time so when you get like eight equipment by the fourth stage you're like i could have had actual items here what the heck is that so i think loot density is pretty bad right now pretty poor uh, by the way, loot density is not the total amount of loot on the stage. It's how uh, it's how close together the loot is. The amount of loot per stage is probably fine, but there's no shot you are exploring the entire stage because of how big they are. The entire stage to pick up every single last item, especially on Monsoon. I probably, probably should have prefaced this video with that, but yeah, I'm playing on Monsoon and the difficulty scaling is no joke. Monsoon and Risk of Rain Returns is nothing like Monsoon and Risk of Rain 2. So my point is you're not going to spend all of your time looking for every single item. That's just not going to happen, right? So the density is how close together the loot is. I feel like you could just spawn more loot in and then that would help that loot density issue. But I do think uh, the equipment are way too plentiful. So maybe just taking out some equipment drops that would automatically make it more rewarding when you do find an actual chest or something or just something to interact with. The third and final point I want to touch on here is that the general flow of combat is not as engaging as it could be. What do I mean by this? The combat right now in Risk of Returns is essentially you face a big line of monsters. Every monster is in a big old straight line. You use all of your cooldowns and then you run the other way and you wait. That's pretty much it. Like Huntress, I've been spamming the Huntress. I am a Huntress enjoyer myself. I love the Huntress because she can just attack the whole time, pretty much the whole time. Not really though, because there are enemies, there are very few enemies that actually come to your character height, like follow you, flying enemies essentially. So the best way to dodge things in the game is just to jump, right? You just spam your jump key and you do that in Risk of Rain 2 as well. Don't get me wrong, but the difference is that you can still engage in combat with the enemies and they are still hitting you, right? You're still, you still have to dodge things. You don't have to think about your movement and stuff. Risk of Rain Returns, it seems like you just funnel everything in a big line. You just jump, 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 jump. You get on some ledges, you get above them. You just use our cooldowns and you just wait and you repeat. It's not fun. This is obviously my personal opinion. Again, this is not my full review. My, my opinions might change, especially because potential solution would simply be to add, I don't know if it's called mouse aiming, directional aiming, whatever it is. Directional aiming, I would assume, is whatever direction you're facing is where you're firing, which is currently how it works on most survivors. Huntress is one of the exceptions. 
But, and, and they are, Hopu Games is working on a patch. They have confirmed they are working on a patch. They are implementing a system where your character is here, and then wherever your cursor is or whatever joystick, your aiming joystick on controller, wherever you move that is where you're going to shoot. So you can move independently. I guess independent aiming is probably the best term for it. You can sh aim and shoot at, obviously not vertically, all right? You're not going to be able to target flying enemies or anything. So you'll have to worry about those engagements. But you can choose where to shoot while you move independently of that. That is going to make the combat feel so much better. I am very happy that they're working on that patch. I don't think that's a small thing. That that goes back to what I said at the start of the video, where it's basically just the first game with DLC on top. That is a huge part of it. And I think this mouse aiming patch is definitely going to be a step in the right direction. It just feels so clunky. It feels so clunky to engage with the monsters, and it's not fun. I get that it's part of the first game. I understand all the Risk Ring 1 veterans or the people that play this style of game. You guys, I understand you like that sort because it, it's challenging. I understand that it's challenging. It's just not the right kind of challenge because it's not engaging. It's not engaging for me to funnel everything in one big old straight line, use my cooldowns and repeat, and I can't actually just like keep in, keep fighting them. It's just not fun. Again, that's that's my own opinion. I would like to hear what you guys' thoughts are as well. So the potential solution again, mouse aiming patch, I think that will alleviate a ton of issues with the combat flow in the game. And then also I think you can lower the monster movement speed. Like they are so fast, even on stage one, stage one where you don't have any items yet. You're not supposed to have very many items yet. The monsters are on top of you like instantly. If you hit the TP at like three minutes or something, I think the strat by the way is to hit the TP by like the one and a half, like one or one and a half minute mark. Cause you have so much money. You don't have to stay in the TP by the way, just a pro tip, just a pro tip. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know. You guys have been playing more race. If you're watching this video, I don't know what he's doing. If you've been watching races stuff, I would assume you want to hit the TP a little earlier if you're struggling on monsoon. Anyway, I think you can lower the monster movement speed. They are incredibly fast. Like they are on, you don't have any room to breathe. Now the, the independent aiming will help this obviously, because you can actually kite them on every character and use your auto attack the whole time. Um, it's just not as engaging as it could be overall the combat. So those are my thoughts on the game. Again, I do recommend the game. I think it's absolutely worth the money. However, you know what kind of games you like way more than what I know what you like if that makes sense. So if you don't like platformers, you're not going to like Risk Grand Returns. Duh. It's that simple. And I think if you don't mind platformers, there's a good chance you might not, Risk Grand Returns might not click with you. Now you might want to wait for the mouse aiming patch. For me, I think that's going to change a lot of stuff, but I'd like to know you guys' thoughts. Those are my uh, day three. This is day three of the game being out. Day three thoughts on the game. Full review will come later down the line. Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.